Hello and good morning, YouTube. It's another one of those. Today, uh, we're actually doing a really cool tier list. I'm looking forward to this one for a little while already. Um, it's about weapons. It's about Sumberstone weapons. Uh, mostly because Sumberstone weapons are the weapons you want to use for a hitless run. And this video is about hitless weapons. Um, I consider good weapons, like we'll rate them together. Uh, there are several categories or things you have to think about when you want to rate a hitless weapon. Of course, it's about accessibility, like how early and how easy is it accessible for you. Um, the damage. Uh, in Elden Ring, obviously, uh, for a Sumberstone weapon, it's very important what um, uh, weapon art slash Ash of War is on that Sumberstone weapon, because you can't change it. And... Um, yeah, all these things combined together. Uh, the setup. How long is your setup with that particular weapon? Uh, all those things combined together make a great weapon. And we're going to talk about, I don't even know, 16, 17 different weapons. Um, I already sorted some out. Uh, these weapons here in Nope, in the Nope category, I uh, I already sorted out but before I started uh, taping the video, because either I do not know about them because I didn't test them in Hitless, or uh, is the music too loud? Or I uh, I just uh, do not like them for Hitless, like personally. Maybe they're all viable, or you could do a Hitless run with those weapons, but I either didn't try or I. Uh, I did not enjoy doing it with those weapons. A um, uh, uh, quick disclaimer, at the start of Elden Ring we tried out a shit ton of weapons. So I played with a lot of weapons in Elden Ring, but not nearly all of those. Because I never tried a weapon if I couldn't access it early on in the game. Um, the weapons we're talking about are down here. And we'll start with, I guess, the Black Knife. The Black Knife uh, is a weapon you can access in... Uh, uh, Altus Plateau killing a, a, a Black Knife Assassin or Black, yeah, Black Knife Assassin, I believe they are called. And um, those Black Knife Assassins are hard to deal with. I never tried to get it in a Hitless run, but technically it's doable to get to Altus with your, let's say you start as a Samurai uh, with your Uchi Katana and kill that Black Knife. But I would not recommend it. I would rate this... Since it's a great weapon, it's fast and it has like the black blade of death, I believe it's called, uh, the the um, weapon art, which is percentage damage, and that's pretty dope. Like if it also creates like a, a a little bit of a lesser health bar for the boss, like a chunk of the health bar just gets taken away, and that's pretty cool. So this is not a bad weapon at all. I would rate it C. Like, uh, I have to scroll up a little bit all the time because of these because of these weapons here. I would rate it a C weapon. There's obviously potential. Um, maybe we'll re-rate some of those. I also have to uh, make this a little bit quicker because it's already four minutes and we did only rate one weapon. Um, so it could be worse, but it could be better. Maybe it should be B though, but the accessibility is not very good. So now let's make it a C weapon. Um, uh, Blasphemous Blade. Pretty dope, I heard. I didn't play with it. It has a ranged attack as well, I believe. And the accessibility is also quite nice, because all you have to do is kill Rykart, and you can do that really early on in the run, actually. Um, so I would rate this uh, a B. This is probably a B. Yeah, this is a B weapon right here. Uh, good accessibility, a ranged uh, spell or ranged usage, and uh, yeah, you can you can basically just grab it and then upgrade it right away after. Uh, the next one would be the Bloodhound Fang. You you guys know the Bloodhound. Most of you guys know the Bloodhound Fang. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it, right? The Bloodhound Fang would be the next one here. Here it is. And uh, the Bloodhound Fang is one of my favorite weapons in Elden Ring. It has such a great weapon art. It's called Bloodhound Finesse, where you just jump backwards, create a little bit of distance, and then you can go back in with the finesse move and execute your enemy, for example. Uh, super cool weapon. 
The charged R2s are super powerful and build up a lot of poise. Um, it's in Limgrave. You can you can access it early on in the run. Um, this is definitely A, in my opinion. This is an A weapon. It's not S tier, because there are better weapons, especially those big boy weapons who build up poise. Uh, so I would say this is A, for sure. Uh, Bloody Hellas, also accessible. Oh, there it is, by the way. I'll, I'll put it over here. Uh, Bloody Hellas, also accessible in Altus Plateau. Um... I never played with it myself. Uh, I watched like Elias play with it, for example, in his speedruns. It seems to be quite a nice weapon, though. It's really quick, and it has this like charge attack where you just run in and then stagger through and build up a shit ton of bleed and shit. Uh, I guess it's it's n quite a good weapon, and you could probably use it for the entire run. You just have to go to Altus, and to go to Altus, you have to pick the fort, uh, the fort, uh, the the Dactus medallions, but. Other than that, it seems to be uh, accessible early on, technically, and I would rate this probably along with the Blasphemous Blade a little bit worse than the Bloodhound Fang in a Hitless run, okay? I'm talking about Hitless. So next we talk about this bad, bad boy right here. This is called the Death's Poker. Um, its accessibility is quite okay with the bow, because you have to kill a death chicken, death bird. But the death bird, um, you can bow it down. It's possible. Um, we have a strat for that. It's just that the death bird, uh, yeah, it takes a while. It's a long setup for the poker, but it's a really strong weapon though. Um, with a really cool weapon art, you can shoot black flame out of it. And it also has, or is it like... Yeah, I think it's Black Flame, and it also has a Chill Bite effect. It's super strong. It's an A weapon. The accessibility is just like... Mm, and it's super slow. What I do not like is that it's so slow. It's even slower than the Fang. Um, but it's it's a cool weapon, and it has a ranged attack. Uh, next one would be uh, the Butt Pluck. Ain Run and Hop use, those, uh, use these Butt Plucks for their Hitless Runs. Or Hop, uh, I think, didn't enjoy the weapon, so... It changed, um, but uh, Ain used it for his hitless run. It has a long setup, but it's an insanely powerful weapon. It has like a long range weapon art, and on top, that long range weapon art seems to build up a lot of poise. And since you guys know poise is one of the, the strongest mechanics in Elden Ring, this is a ridiculously good weapon. This is definitely A tier. This is probably somewhere in between A and S. A plus. Uh, let's put it S, because it's really, it's like a dope weapon. Or is it A? Ah, not make, make it an S. Why not? Come on, A, run. <laughs> why Why not? It's a dope weapon. Um, uh, uh, the problem, or not the problem, but the, the thing that, the, the downside, the only downside for this one is the accessibility. Other than that, it's, it's super good and has this la range attack, which is obviously fantastic. Frozen Needle. Um, a super cool weapon, not very strong though. You can access it early on. I like it a lot. That's why it's within the within the uh, what do you call it in the tier list. It's it's just a, I don't know. It's something I like a lot, and uh, I think it's not very powerful or anything. But you can access it early on. It's right where you can find EG. Uh, there is like a, a crypt or a dungeon or a cave or whatever. And you, you just have to defeat, like, one enemy, I believe, one boss. And this is, like, C along with this. Even it's it's more accessible, but it's not as good as the Black Knife. That's definitely a C, yeah. The damage is okay. It builds up Frost. Um, a Frostbitten effect, uh, which is cool. Um, uh, for the extra damage. A golden Halberd. Dope weapon. You have to kill the, what do you call it, for it, of course, uh, the uh, Tree Sentinel. But you can access it, like, basically super early on. It's an A-tier weapon for sure. Uh, super dope. It does a shit ton of damage. And builds up the poise for the execution. I think Asmongold used it for his playthroughs. It's really strong. And um, it's easy to access. This is a Colossal Straight Sword. I don't know the exact name, but I know where to get it. You have to go all the way down to the Weeping Peninsula, 
and defeat the misbegotten guy. And after you defeat the misbegotten guy, you can get the access to this colossal straight sword. And those, like, poise is just a very, very, very strong mechanic in Elden Ring, okay? You can poise break e almost every enemy or every enemy. And that just leaves them open for critical attacks. And uh, that is hilariously good in Elden Ring. Especially in bosses like the Elden Beast. Because their stagger animation is, like, five, six seconds or so. So you can get in, like, four hits and then still go for the execution. It's pretty dope so um misbegotten kill into this one you just have to find your openings with these weapons i personally am a fan of like fast weapons but i can see people getting hitless runs with those because they have their upsides for sure so um it goes into a with these big boy weapons it seems like poise is like a is like a thing right <laughs> <laughs> the poise break is one of my favorite mechanics in elden ring uh, that's the meteor meteoric ore blade you can find in Kalid, in a chest, I believe, somewhere. Um, also easy to access. Uh, it has a bleed effect, and um, it's a good katana, I would say. So uh, you could easily do a hitless run. I would rate it B, yeah, along with these. Because you can access it early on, you can just like run there and get it and then pour it back to Limgrave or whatever. Um, it it definitely is a weapon you can play through the any percent hitless. I would say so. Uh, the Ice Grind Hatchet was nerfed or the weapon art was nerfed. Uh, the fr Hoar Frost Stomp. It's still obviously usable. It has a Frostbite on it. Um, since you have the Hoar Frost Stomp, um, you can Frost bite the enemy with Horfrost as well. Um, good weapon. You just need something to negate the hor uh, the frost bite after by shooting a fire arrow or maybe having a torch to just hit the enemy once with a torch to have the frost bitten effect available again. Um, super easy to access in uh, Lyernia, but since Horfrost was nerfed, I would put it down here into B or even C. No, let's put it into C. No, let's put it into B because it's so easy to access. It's really like you basically come across and it's just a chest you have to open and that's it. Uh, the magma plate. I just put it in because um, it's so dope. Uh, it's not very easy to access. It's also not very strong, but it it it's fun to play with and I can see people getting a hitless run with it. it. The accessibility is basically you have to farm it. You have to kill the longish longies in a volcano manner and they drop it by chance. Uh, technically possible, of course it's more like a meme pick. But if you want to do it, you can do it. That's a D. That's still a cool weapon. Um, this is... One of the greatest weapons in Elden Ring, maybe one of my favorite weapons in Elden Ring, it's called um, Maria's Executioner, Maria's Executioner, I believe. Super cool weapon, you can get it in the Shaded Castle by defeating the boss there. Um, the weapon art, it, like it has a bleeding effect on it, and the weapon art is, you can shoot the blade away and then it drills like this, basically. And you can let it drill within the enemy and then call it back. And then you can even execute after you called it back. It is such a great weapon. Um, uh, I uh, I would love to do a hitless run with it. But the accessibility is a little bit of a problem. Because, yeah. Because um, you have to go to the Shaded Castle and defeat the boss there. And yeah, how to do that without any setup, right? Possible, though. I see. I saw Lobos... <gasps> Parrying the guy a shit ton of times back to back, but still. I don't know if that's r super good to do, but overall I would say it's a B weapon. It's definitely better than these two, and um, maybe it's a B plus even. Because the only thing that, that would hold this weapon back is going to the Shaded Castle, getting it, upgrading it after, and so on and so forth. Um, same would be here with the knee heal. The only thing that holds this weapon back is basically the accessibility and that, like, the, the weapon art is really slow. You have to find 
big openings for this weapon art, like face transitions, for example, or whatever. Um, but cool weapon. The weapon art is really strong. And as you guys know, Bleed is strong in Elden Ring. This is definitely not D. This is a C tier weapon. For speed, I know that speedrunners use it a lot uh, lately for the distortion challenge run, um, the region log one. Uh, it's a dope weapon for sure. Uh, I would love to put it here, but I don't know if it's viable for hitless though. I never tried it. Uh, no, let's put it down here because because it's just like the knee heal is just something you have to channel, and it's more like a speedrun thing than a hitless thing, I believe. The same goes for these weapons, by the way, up here, like these bubble weapons. They're also kind of strong, but you have to channel them for so long. So if you want to put one of those, you, I would put them down here or even down here because the accessibility, you have to enter Lindell to get one of those. Um, maybe that's a little better than the Nihil Spear. Um, Morgoth's weapon, dope weapon, really strong as well. It has like a running attack with a follow-up explosion, scales with a cane, bleeds out the enemy. Really good weapon though. The problem is you have to kill Morgoth for it, and that's why it's B. Yeah, that's why it's B. You can grab it in your run as a follow-up weapon maybe, or I don't know. It's a cool weapon, but the accessibility is just not there, unfortunately. Um, you could go and kill Morgoth early, but still. Um, ornated Blade. Uh, you get by killing the Grafted Scion. Uh, it has like a healing... No, it has like a holy buff, I believe. A self and You can self-inflict a holy buff on your weapon. Um, I have never fought with this weapon. But I can see people ornating their way through the, the Elden Ring. Um, it's probably... B tier as well. I don't know how strong it can be, but it's B tier because you basically come across at the very beginning of the run. And uh, then you can just use it. All you have to do is kill the Grafted Sign, and uh, that's um, obviously doable. Uh, next one is Moon Veil. I used Moon Veil for a little wi while. Uh, it's a really good weapon. It has uh, a long range attack as well. It builds up poise quite well on top and um, the fact that it scales with intelligence makes obvious makes it obviously easier for you to use magic on top so i would make moon veil definitely an s or a tier weapon let's put it in s because uh because um, it has such a, a great usage on many boss fights and i know a lot of people use it i think it's on top also good in pvp uh yeah, the Serpent Hunter um, is the absolute goat in Hitless, so we have to put it at the very, very, very top. Like, this is the best weapon you can use for your Hitless run in Elden Ring, for sure. Uh, the Serpent Hunter is S+, plus technically above these weapons up here. Uh, it's You come across for free, you can just pick it up. And then port of the Rikard fight, upgrade it, and with a plus 10 Serpent Hunter, you just fuck over everything. You build up the poise with these charged R2 like nothing else. I think it's like 50 poise damage to an enemy, uh, which is ridiculous. It's even more than Flame of Red Mains. And uh, it kills enemies really quick. You get a lot of scripted kills out of this weapon. And uh, it's probably the best hitless weapon. It has uh, an insane accessibility, almost no setup or way less setup than other weapons and it's super strong with the poise build up s plus um serpent hunter if you want to go for hitless right now i would highly recommend the serpent hunter uh, next one is reduvia that's the one we're using that's also a top weapon the only problem is that you have killed that motherfucker narius all the time and narius is such a fucking cunt but it's still one of my favorite weapons in elden ring so uh, this is definitely for me it's an S tier weapon, okay? It's all at the very top with all these great weapons. Um, so uh, go and go for Reduvia, guys. Um, it's a great weapon. Uh, the Venomous Fang you can you can pick up in what's it called? Callet as well, almost for free, basically. 
And uh, the Venomous Fang is dope because it's quick and you can buff yourself with it. And on top, you uh, you have... Uh, what's it called? Like most, I should say that most Somberstone weapons you cannot buff, okay? Um, but uh, for some reason, like some weapons you can buff with resin. For example, the or Grease in Elden Ring. Uh, for example, the Bloodhound Fang. You can buff with Grease and you can buff these with Grease. So you can add additional additional damage additional damage to these weapons or additional ways to uh, bleed out your enemy or frostbite your enemy with freezing grease or blood grease and it has like a poison effect on it on top which is quicker than any other poison in the game it's uh it's just half the time of any other poison in the game and uh it but it does the same amount of damage so you can poison your enemy more often within a fight which is kind of cool uh, I would rate it down here, C. Because it's a neat weapon. I like it personally, but I I can see that there are just enemies you have to fight for a long time with these two. And you don't build up a lot of poise as well, of course. Uh, Rivers of Blood. Everybody loves this weapon. Um, it's kind of a cool weapon. Maybe for PvP it's really, really good. But for Hitless, it's not that good, because the Corpse Piler is just such a... I don't know, such a bad... Uh, or not bad, but such a... Just the duration is too long. It's like the knee heel spear a little bit, and the accessibility is late game. Now, this is definitely a C weapon for... for you can pick it up for an All Remembrances and kill a couple of bosses with it if you want. But I uh, do not recommend... Uh, Rivers of Blood for Hitless. I know a lot of people love it because it's such a great PvP weapon apparently, but um, for Hitless it's not a good weapon. And last but not least, of course, um, the... Uh, what's it called? Sword of Night and Flame. It was an S-tier weapon, definitely, in uh, earlier patches. It was super broken. Uh, now it's not. It's a good weapon now, but, but not more. You can put it in A. I think the Sword of Night and Flame is still a weapon you can easily no uh, do a no-hit run with. You can pick it up in Carry and Manor, so it's basically a free pickup if you want to do that early on. And uh, yeah, that is it. That's our hit. That's our hitless weapon tier list. These are mostly or all Somberstone weapons, guys. Um, this video was way too long. I apologize for that. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed it regardless. And um, uh, we'll be back on Thursday with another randomizer video, but a cut one this time. And then I'm gonna like frequently upload the, the uncut gameplay as well. Um, I hope that's okay. I just wanted to save these, uh, these uh, mod playthroughs on this channel because maybe someone wants to rewatch something at some point. So I'm gonna save it here because uh, on Twitch, the VODs, they are going to disappear. Um, guys, thank you for watching. See you guys later on stream. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, weapon, little bit of a weapon tier list. And uh, um, I'll, I'll, today we'll get the run, by the way. Thank you for watching, and uh, see, you, see you later. Bye-bye.